Hey, Scope Creep here. I want to show you how to use class objects in visualbasic.net. I'll be using Visual Studio 2013 today. Go up to File, New, Project, and we're going to choose a Windows Form application. Uh, call it what you will. I will call this Class Objects 7. And the first thing you'll do is you'll go up to View and go to Solutions Explorer. And over on the right, where you see the name of your solution, right click and go down to Add and go to class. Uh, you'll see it asks you for a name for your class. In this tutorial we'll use player uh, simply because I think uh, the concept of creating a player in like a video game or something lends itself well to the uh, idea of class objects. Class objects are, are used as wrappers for things or a way to, to uh, keep variables together uh, that are related or as in this case to create multiple instances of a similar object. Um, you think of it as object-oriented programming, you know, player one, player two, player three, they're all the same type of object, but they have different values for their variables. Uh, for example, uh, once it creates the class, everything about your class will go inside of these two lines. So I can declare a private variable, um, such as player name, as string. So this variable has its value inside the class. It's not shared uh, in the greater application. Um, across multiple instances of your class. So if you did that, it would be public, but I think most most variables inside a class object would be private like this. Uh, one thing you'll find inside classes is called a constructor. Uh, this is simply means when the class is created, it calls this sub new. And you can pass values to your new class um, within the constructor or the new sub uh, as so. You just pass a value. And then you can use it. Like in this case, I'll pass the path to player name. And now my my new class object will have an internal variable called player name that has a value when it gets created. Um, something else you'll see are called properties. And the most basic property is a read only. If you declare a property as read only, that means it will only have the ability to return a value to the caller. So it's a read-only property. In this case, I'll call it full name. Um, and you'll see that the editor added the get feature. So get is how you um, return a value from a property. So the full name is a property inside the class. And if I ask for it, it'll give me the player name. That's the property. Um, there's also something you'll you read, I'm sure, about uh, or we'll hear about called methods. And a method is really just a fancy name for a, a function or a sub when it's within a class. So I'll say this is a public, this will be a public function. Um, I'll call this first name. This will be the first name of the player. Um, I will declare a temporary variable, a temporary array as a string, and I'll set it equal to I use a split function here and split the player name by a space. We'll assume that the player name will have a space. And then I'll return the first element of the array, which should be the first name. So that's a method. So let's go see how to call these things. Um, if we go to form one, we're going to add a couple buttons on here um, to create the players and illustrate how that's done. So first I'll add one button and um, I'll go down the text property and call it create player one. Now do the same thing for button two. I'm um, just be create player two. So how do you create a player? So first of all, you would dim a variable as but instead of a string or an integer. This will actually be a player. My class object is now a declarable type, and I can make another one. Like so and since they're at the top of my form, I can use them in multiple subs. That's why I did that up here instead of down here. So now when I press that button, say that player1 equals, and the new keyword creates a new instance of the class. This new player, and I'm going to pass uh, a name to that, because remember the constructor. Um, for the name, I'll just make it equal to a, um, let's see, a dim name the string equal to, I just make it an input box, and ask the player name. Okay, so 
this will create an instance of the class called player one. And to help illustrate the difference though, if I'm gonna create another instance, I just do that. So classes are, are very nice because they're recreatable um, over and over and over. So create player one, and player two. Now to kind of see how to um, access the properties and the methods or functions within the class, I'll put a couple text boxes in here. This text box will be, um, let's say that this text box is the, the player name, which we know we're gonna pass. So we'll call this TB full name. And this next one we'll call first name because we know we have a function in there that returns first name, Just like that. Or I have this other button in here to um, to call the class. So let's say that this one, um, where's my text? One of the labels. Let's say we're going to call the methods in um, player one with this button. And this button will be for player two. So I want to show you how to call these. So if I go in here to the first button and I click on it, <clears throat> I can say that the text box for the for, for the full name dot text property is equal to. So how do you access things within a class? Well, it's very simple. You put the not the class name, but the object that you created, player one in this case. Dot. You put a dot, and you go down and find the value coming from the get, and that's it. Full name. Same with the function. Very easy. Again, not the class, but the when you created object, you created dot, and then the other one was first name. That was a function. You turn it the same way. So very simple to do. Um, the other button, I can do the same thing, but to show the difference here, player two. Player two is a, a different instance of the class. So I wanted to illustrate that clearly. Um, so if I create a player here and I ask for the player name, and I type uh, John Doe, okay, that creates the first instance of the class. And then create player two. The Elsa Presley is playing today. Don't worry about that spelling there. Now, when I call the methods in class one, it's going to fill in the text box with John Doe, and there's his first name, and then Elvis Presley, and there's his first name. So you have two uh, memory resident objects that have different values for their internal um, variables. Now, one really nice, thing, well, great thing about classes, we're going to go back to it again. We're going to add another, another property called help. And this is not read only enough. That's uh, important to, to see. Watch what happens when I type get. It puts in the get and something new called set. So if I want to get the current player health, let's say we have a variable called um, current health. As a string. Okay, I got current health as a string. So if I go down here and I and I have a property called health, and the get will return the health. So I'm going to go return current health. Then the set can be used to set current health. And it's going to be equal to the value that's passed to the set. Let me show you how that works. That's very simple as well. Um, I'll take this button here and I'll call it, um, I'll make this text say help. And then I'll get a new text box here. And I'll call it uh, TB Health, so I can clearly see what it is. Okay, so I double click on that. So, how do you, you know, how do you set and get? So, you can set a class very simply by pair one dot help equal nine in this case. So we set it very simply by accessing the the that it already knows to use the set and get. It already knows which one to use by the context. So. Likewise, I can say text box health text equals everyone that health. So as you can see, I, I access them with the exact same syntax. But this sets it to nine, and this will get it from the class object put in the text box. Let's check that out. So I'll create the player John Doe. He now exists. As you can see, there's the methods working. The health, when I click this, it will set the health to 9, and then we'll get the health. Let's put it in the text box. Okay, so that's a property, which is not just a read-only. It has a get and 
they said. Well, thank you for tuning in. That's our 10 minutes uh, classes explained in 10 minutes. We'll go into more detail at a later date. Please subscribe if you enjoyed, and I hope to see you soon.